In this video, I wanna show you how to use the dates between DAX function in Power BI. I'm gonna show you how to write it step by step and also show to you some of the scenarios in which it could be useful. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So here I want to show you the scenario that I prepared for you today. I have a Power BI report that just has total sales across a series of dates. So you'll see I've put it in a table format here in our visual and it gives us the total at the bottom here across all these dates. So let's say we want to get the total sales of a specific date period. So let's say we want to get the total sales between a start date and an end date. And to do that, you can first simply do that implicitly via the filters pane here on the right hand side. So by selecting the visual, you'll have the option to uh, use the date filter, the column that you have there to set the range that you want to see. So let's say you want to get the first of first of 1996, I will say is after end is before 0101-1997. So that will give you the total sales for uh, between those two dates. So before uh, the 1st of January 1997 um, and after the 1st of January 1996. You'll see that's the range here. But now let's say you want to create a measure that explicitly does this for you um, where it's not controlled by an implicit filter from the filters pane but is actually embedded into the code itself. Now uh, you can use the dates between in order to get that number explicitly into your DAX function. And if you're not familiar with the concepts of implicit or explicit measures, I covered it with some examples in a separate video. So go check those out if you haven't yet. So before we head into the demo on writing it, let's have a look at the dates between um, within the documentation itself. So here it says it returns a table that contains a column of dates that begins with a specified start date and continues until a specified end date. Um, so you'll see here it recommends that this is used as a filter uh, to be passed in the calculate function is exactly what we're going to do. So here we have the example that uh, needs to be fed in this de dates between. So it needs three things. It needs a date uh, column and then it needs a two scalar values a start date and an end date um, which is the range of the dates between that you want to get now because this is returning a table we can actually visualize what it does by creating a DAX table for it uh, so let's try to do that uh, here in our example so let's create let's say a new table from here. So if you create a new table here, it says it writes a DAX expression to create a new table. And this is how you can create a, a table using DAX. So here I'm just gonna name this, uh, let's say dates between, and then we're gonna start typing dates between. So first it needs the dates. So we have the calendar dates uh, column from the calendar table. And then let's say our start date, uh, let's say, um, let's give it uh, the 1st of January this year. And let's say we want the end date to be next year. Here we go. So we've just given it the three expressions or parameters that it needs. It needs the calendar date table, a scalar value that is uh, giving you the date, the start date, which is the 1st of 2021, and then the end date. Now if we hit enter, you'll see that it returns a table with one column and it gives us exactly that. So it gives us the dates from the 1st of January 2021 
all the way to the 1st of January 2022. So pretty easy, right? So a couple of things to bear in mind here. Uh, there is some limitation to dates between. So first of all, uh, the first parameter that you feed it, the date table here, uh, you are limited, the date range that you set here is limited to whatever dates is available in that date column. So what do I mean by that? So if we go to our calendar table here um, and ignore the how I've written it, uh, just pay attention to how far this goes. So if I uh, sort this by descending, you'll see that it only goes up to the 28th of September. I think this is September 2025. Now, if you try to do a date between that goes beyond this date, you won't be able to get the full range. So it will stop um, when the calendar date column ends. So let's see that in action here. So let's go back to our date between here. And let's say we change this from uh, 1st of January 2025 and this one to 26. So you'll see at the bottom here, 271 rows. That's obviously not right. Um, and if we scroll down here, you will see that it sort of matches with what I showed you. It's the end of our calendar table, 28th of September, 2025, which is not the full range of uh, our dates between. The second thing in the dates between here is that we are still calling a function called dates in order to feed this uh, function with a date value in these two parameters. Now, as part of the August 2021 update, they've, uh, the Power BI team has given us a way um, to use string literals instead. So not using uh, functions to call, but instead just writing it directly in the DAX function. And I wanna just give it a try here to see if it will work. So let's say here, uh, let's change this back. Um, and instead of calling the date function here, we'll just do DT, we'll do the um, uh, double quotes here. And then in between, we're going to feed it the, uh, the date that we want. So the string literal. Now it looks like it will give us an error, but uh, you'll see that after that, it just goes away those, those errors. So we'll try to do the same thing here on the end date. So DT, double quotes and inside is our date range. So one, one. And if we hit enter, you'll see that it gives us no errors and it gives us the range that we wanted, except we're not calling a function, but we're using string literal for it, which is really great. So now that we know how to use dates between and what its limitations are, let's have a look at trying to use it as part of our calculation. So here we have this total sales um, and we are doing the summing between 1996 and 1997 and we want to define it explicitly in a DAX measure. So let's start typing it here. So let's create a new measure and let's say uh, create a new measure called total sales 96 to 97, 6 to 97. And then here we're gonna start typing calculate. So to calculate, we want to calculate the total sales. And in our filter context in this calculate, we wanna use dates between. So essentially we're saying um, do the total sales, but only the dates within, these, uh, within this function. So we'll do the same thing here. We're gonna give it the dates column from the calendars table. The start date obviously would be DT. 199611 and then the end date would be DT199711. Close that. If we hit enter, we put that measure here. So you'll see it sort of looks right. Um, uh, but the difference, um, it should be correct. The only thing is that uh, this total sales that we have on our table excludes the firsts and first, so the top and tails. So we just need to change this, is on or after, is on or before, and that should match 
just right. So 233K. So now let's have a look at another way that you can use date between. So let's say you have this list of sales uh, on a daily basis and every day you want to see the last three days of total sales. So let's say here, for example, um, in this value here on this row, the 8th of July, 1996, uh, we want to have a new column here that says, um, I want you to add up this number, our total sales for today and the last three days from today. So it will be this day, yesterday and the day before yesterday. So uh, it will be 2483 plus 1863 plus 440. So we want this number 4786 in this row right here. And then we want that every single day, um, ev the last three days for every single uh, day. So we can use dates between to create uh, somewhat of a, a relative calculation. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. So first we're gonna create a new measure. So we will say uh, total sales, uh, three days, last three days. And then uh, the first thing that we'll need to do, we'll uh, create a variable. And this variable will be, uh, is something that we'll reuse again and again. It will be called this date. And for this one, we just want to store a local version of the date on the current context. So for each row, you will have your date. So this will serve as our anchor to say, I want you to stop the dates between, this will be the end date. And then I want you to start date to be three days from this date. Uh, it sounds really, really confusing. So I just wanna show you how we are going to do the calculate from here. So we're gonna start writing a return. Uh, we'll type calculate from here. So the same thing as before, we wanna do the total sales. Now instead, uh, well, not instead, we'll do another date between here. So it asks for three things once again. So we're gonna feed it the date table, uh, the calendar date. Uh, the start date would be the this date. Um, well, that will be the end date, but the start date, we want to be three days before that date. So actually, instead of just using the function or the variable, we wanna write date add. So this allows us to move the date that we feed it to a specific interval. So we'll say uh, for this calendar date, uh, actually that's wrong, it needs to be this date. So from this date, I want you to give me minus three and the interval is three days. So what it does, it gives, it changes that dates that we have, the current date context that we have three days before. So basically the start dates for each row would always be three days before the current date. The end date simply is just this date and that's it. So you just close that and we bring that into our table here. And here we go. So this is exactly what we're looking for, right? So it's giving us the total sales for the last three days on each of the days that we have here in the table. So for example, here we're looking on the 7th of July. Um, it's giving us a total sales uh, last three days value of 2,303 pounds. Now we know that because it's an addition of the last three days that we have here. So 440, 183, and then blank. So 1863 plus 440, it will be 2303. What's good about this method is that you don't have to be tied to a specific uh, range. So let's say three days, you can move these to different ranges. So let's say a week, four weeks, a month, or a year, you just need to change this uh, variables here in this date add parameter here. So you change where you want the start to happen. So let's say if you want to do from uh, last month, so be minus one, and then you want to say last month. And this will give you the total last sales for the previous month. 
Another thing is that you also don't need to be tied to the aggregation that you've selected. So at the moment we are doing a total sales for the last three days or the last month, but let's say we want to get an average instead of um, the just the sum. And to do that is pretty simple. You just need to replace the expression that you want to evaluate in your calculate. So at the moment we have total sales, which uh, this is a measure that just sums up uh, the total sales, um, but we can replace this with something else. So I won't create a new, um, let's say we won't create a new measure here. So we're just gonna directly change this into an average. So average AX, we wanna say, give me order details. I want you to give me the average of the total sales. So first of all, I am doing, I'm creating the total sales. So the total sales is unit price multiplied by quantity. And I say out of those total sales, give me the average in them. So now it gives you the average uh, sales for the last month. And that's really it for this video. I hope I've helped you understand how easy it is to start using dates between and the different type of scenarios that you can use it on. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.